Hi everyone, and welcome to the Round 4 report from the Chorus Tournament 2010. There were two wins in this round. Amazingly, Alexei Shirov continued his winning streak with a fourth successive win, this time against the Dutch Grandmaster Jan Smeets. The only other victor was Vasily Ivanchuk in his game against Luke Van Weerly, and as we saw one of Shirov's games in the last video, I figured we'd take a look at Chucky's victory in this one. He's one of my own personal favourite players for his amusingly eccentric character as well as his superb chess skill. It's generally accepted that the Ukrainian is one of the strongest players in history, never to become world champion, although his results are often erratic. His opponent, Luke Van Whaley, is one of the best Dutch players in the world and has been playing at the top level for many years. Ivanchuk had the white, white pieces and opened with e4, to which Van Whaley replied c5, the Sicilian defence, and in particular the Nidorf variation. After knight f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, and a6, which he also used against Nakamura two games previously, and he went into the same sub-variation after bishop g5, e6, f4, and knight bd7, so perhaps this is home preparation of some kind, although it doesn't appear to be serving him too well. Normal at this stage, generally speaking, in the Nidorf is queen f3, but Ivanchuk showed that he too has some tricks up his sleeve as he now went into some preparation of his own with queen e2, planning to castle long and throw up the kingside pawns as normal for white in the Sicilian. So next came queen c7 and Ivanchuk castled, as opposed to taking on f6 now, which is how Nakamura played in conjunction with queen f3 instead of e2. So, b5 from Van Whaley, immediately starting the minority attack typical for black in the Sicilian. And a3 from Ivanchuk, which is an important move for white to remember in such positions. In my 60 memorable games, Bobby Fischer discusses the danger of not playing this move in a couple of games, which I'll go through at a later date. The point, of course, is to stop black from playing b4 with initiative. So bishop e7 and now g4, aggressively continuing the pawn storm. And rook b8 to enable b4, but Ivanchuk proves that, that this is a dangerous line for black to elect a bit later on. Here he plays bishop g2, and Fritz's comment on this move was white gets in control, and it's easy to see why, as now he's finished development and has strong initiative building already while the black king remains in the centre. There's a school of thought who believe that black need not lose a tempo by castling in the Sicilian, and Van Whaley seems to be in agreement, in this game at least. Here he played b4, and after a takes b4, rook takes b4. And now e5 from Ivanchuk, which is gaining space and liberating the scope of this bishop here on g2. Ivanchuk's idea is to sacrifice a pawn to generate initiative, something he also did in his game against Jan Smeets in an earlier round, resulting in a mating attack in that game. And here the resulting attack is very strong and nets him the exchange. It's nicely creative modern play. After d takes e5, he doesn't recapture but plays knight c6, attacking the rook at b4 and the bishop at e7. Depending on how black defends, white gets varied compensation for the pawn. In some lines, there's knight takes e7, followed up with king takes e7, and white gains the bishop pair and traps the black king in the centre, which is easily enough compensation. However, Van Whaley decided to give up the exchange instead with bishop b7, which is stronger and more advisable than rook takes f4, which is another possibility, because now white has knight takes e7, and be best play goes rook d4, bishop takes f6, g takes f6, knight takes c8, queen takes c8, and knight e4, with a big advantage to white, who's two pawns up, objectively speaking. Black has two pawns for the piece that he's down, but his position is inferior, and this would be an easily won game for white, with correct play. So instead... Van Whaley played bishop b7, and Ivanchuk gladly accepted the exchange. So, bishop takes b4. And here Van Whaley has, you know, at least a pawn for the exchange and some activity for his pieces as compensation 
but objectively speaking white has a big edge um, but black has a degree of compensation for the material deficit if he plays energetically he could maybe equalize but I think it's fairly unlikely Fritz didn't seem to think it was possible so f takes e5 now and von Wedel plays bishop takes c3 and Ivanchuk answer with e takes f6 instead of routinely recapturing here on c3 and this gives van Wely the option of playing bishop takes f6 now which would keep these pawns and these pawns here in good order you know there's going to be no doubled pawns however seeing as he has he's the exchange down it's better to try and play dynamically so he answered instead with g takes f6 opening the g file and attacking the bishop and Ivanchuk was happy to get the bishops off the board now as any simplification makes his advantage in being the exchange up more pronounced so he played b takes c3 and after f takes g5 he proceeded with further simplification bishop takes b7 and after queen takes b7 he played h4 which is a nifty move as it makes it dangerous for black to castle due to the potentially open h file thus keeping the rook out of the game here at h8 and the king in the center so van Wely is not in good shape here and he tried to get counterplay against the pawn here on c3 but Ivanchuk was willing to let that go because it's a doubled pawn so it's in his interests to get rid of this weakness so he just played h takes g5 allowing queen takes c3 and Ivanchuk now has queen takes a6 which equalizes on the pawns so now white is a clear exchange up and black has no attacking chances or play at all and to make matters worse Van Wely now blund blundered with knight c5 but realistically he could have resigned at this stage and perhaps he wanted to wait until more than 25 moves had been played so the game wouldn't feature in books on miniatures which you know is wins in 25 moves or less and some GM's you know well it's fairly common for them to prolong the game a couple of moves further than 25 um, if it's possible you know in order to avoid I mean it's, it'd be embarrassing for a grandmaster to have their quick losses in these books so it's possible that that's the reason Van Wede was playing on here I mean his position is clearly losing instead of knight c5 queen e3 check is a alternative line that Fritz gave but after simply rook d2 black still has absolutely nothing and all the activity and advantages are whites so knight c5 is what Van Wely has just played and the reason this is a blunder is because white has several ways to win now and Ivanchuk played queen a8 check which in actual fact wasn't the strongest move um, stronger was the forcing line queen c8 check and black has only one move which is king e7 and now rook d7 check again gives black only one defense knight takes d7 and now queen takes c3 and it's game over so queen a8 check anyway is what Ivanchuk played and this line is also winning king e7 is the only move now queen a7 check king f8 is the only reasonable answer anything else loses material or results in mate but now comes rook h f1 and here on the 26th move Van Wehle resigns white's attack is going to be mating and black can only delay it with crazy sacrifices like knight b3 check and king b1 and queen a1 check etc so it's a uh, pointless to continue and it's you know grand ma grandmaster etiquette dictates that you really have to resign in a position such as this so it was a great game from Ivanchuk who's tied for second place with Nakamura and Carlsen on three out of four behind only Shirov who's on fire with four out of four as I mentioned so I hope you enjoyed this game please leave any comments or thoughts thanks very much